Good evening to uh, you folks that are listening in and uh, remotely and the folks that are here. I'd like to call the meeting of the Rockingham County Board of Commissioners for May 4th uh, to order. In a moment, uh, I'm going to ask uh, our county manager, Lance Messler, to have our invocation. That will be followed by a Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, tonight, uh, Commissioner Travis will be leading that. Um, once again, we are adjusting our protocol and format to accommodate the, the virus problems that we're having. And I might advise you at this point that we'll continue to follow this protocol until we get some adjustment from the state level regulations. So our next meeting will also be in this facility following the same format. So with that, gentlemen, let's stand to, for the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance. If you would, please join me in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come together tonight with thankful hearts for your provision and your protection. We ask for discernment to do what is best for the citizens of our great county. Let us not forget the magnitude of our responsibility, nor take for granted the blessings of being leaders in our community and the auspicious opportunity we have to serve. We pray that you will teach us to work together for the betterment of society, strengthen us when our decisions are difficult, encourage us when we need reassurance, Please lead and guide us now as we begin this meeting. We pray these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We know now on item three, this is the approval of the agenda. Gentlemen, you've had this for about 11 or 12 days at, uh, at this time. Uh, do we have a motion for the agenda as is or adjusted for any reason? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the agenda with the removal of item number 9A, which is the approval of the lease of the community kitchen building. And the addition of? Closed session. In addition of closed session, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. And second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed by aye. nay. So our agenda is approved. Next is the consent agenda, which is uh, less consequential items. However, if any of the public have questions about any item that's on a consent agenda, please contact our county manager and he will explain the details of which. Gentlemen, you've also had the consent agenda and I uh, would seek a motion either approving or adjusting. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Motion to approve. I'll second. second. And second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed by nay. Gentlemen, unless you know something that I don't know, we have no one signed up for public comment tonight. And I would remind anybody listening in, if you do want to sign up, contact Jennifer Woods, our clerk to the Board of Commissioners, ahead of time in the future, or sign up just before the meeting, and uh, we would still have public comment. We move to item seven at this time. Dr. Mark Kinlaw, president of Rockingham Community College, is going to update us on the quarter cent sales tax and our workforce development center. Good to see you there, Dr. Kinlaw. It's good to see you too, and, and thank uh, thank you for letting me come and, and present to you. And um, Tony Gunn is is doing a lot of teleworking for us. Otherwise, he would have been here. He probably would be more suited for this than me, but. I want to do two things really to go through uh, first um, the um, uh, the PowerPoint that talks about quarter cent sales tax and then I want to come I want to circle back to the Center for Workforce Development and really spend uh, most of my time doing that so uh, of course I'm st continuing to be thankful to all of you for supporting our quarter cent sales tax um, and I think um, we're making very good use of that to improve our um, what we can do for students and that's really the main focus of it from a workforce development standpoint so let's go through some things that, that we're doing now. This is the, this is the building 
I'll circle back to that in just a minute. I was going to do the video first, but um, we decided it's probably easier to do the PowerPoint first, and we'll come back to this. But this is a, just an aerial view of the building, and I'll, like I say, we'll come back to it in just a few minutes because you'll, you'll get a much better look of that on the video. They'll circle over it and so forth. But, um, so let me go to uh, the timeline for, our, uh, for the Workforce Development Center as it is right now. We're, we're working with ADW Architects out of Charlotte. Uh, we are spending, uh, we're beginning to look at the interior now, but we have, um, we're in the, still in the, in the schematic design phase that you see, um, was supposed to end in April. We have now started a design development phase, and you can see how all this is going to play out uh, between now and the construction completion, which we're thinking is going to be sometime early 2023. Uh, so we're, we're on schedule right now. Things are moving well. Uh, very pleased with the architectural firm that we're working with. Uh, so this is, uh, this is where uh, things stand. Of course, we have to work with the Office of State Construction. Uh, that does uh, require quite a bit of work with them and a lot of uh, documentation, a lot of time, but they do save us money. So there's, there's, there's some very good in working with them to have another set of eyes on the project. So we think construction start date will be sometime uh, late 2021, more likely uh, toward the end of it, around November, December, uh, if things go to plan. And then, of course, the construction completion, as you see, in 23. So far with our revenues, uh, this is October of 18 uh, through, of course, that's when the quarter cent sales tax, um, that's when we first started, that's when it started October 1st. We started getting some of our first payments in December of that year. So you see what the revenues have been thus far, around 2.6 million um, and some of our, and the expenditures to date. Now let's just talk about some of the things that we're doing with that. Uh, we have spent a lot of the money, uh, quite a, a bit of the money on upgrading uh, 20 labs in seven buildings. These would be computer labs. They could be, um, uh, we've done an industrial systems lab. We've done an electrical systems lab. Uh, we've done an information technology lab. So we're spending quite a bit on upgrading our technology and what we can do for students. Uh, we've re replaced a lot of computers for faculty and staff to better support students and also uh, teaching and learning. We've had to do a lot of upgrading to, to our network uh, from a wiring standpoint. And then, of course, we, we just uh, very recently um, installed a new uh, telephone system. So we are real pleased with what we've been able to do with, with, with catching up with our technology. I think maybe I've told you before, just staying on top of our technology is about a half a million dollars per year. That's just to stay current. And we were, at, we were well behind where we needed to be. We'd like to be on a cycle of computer labs about every four years at the most, uh, particularly for students. We want to make sure they have the best in front of them. So we spent a lot of money on the technology upgrades. At least three quarters of a million of it has been, has been spent on uh, what you see up here and, and perhaps even more. So we're real pleased with what uh, we've been able to do there. So that's where we stand with the quarter cent sales tax. Uh, we continue to, um, to use those funds uh, to try to, uh, to do, put, it, put, our, put our college in a better position to serve students, you know, especially from a workforce development standpoint, put better tools in front of our faculty I can tell you that this semester has been incredibly challenging uh, with COVID-19, this coronavirus. Uh, we, we went on, we started on, uh, our spring break ended uh, March the 9th, or started March 9th. We gave an additional week um, for our faculty for spring break, converted everything that we could to online, and so we've had quite a bit ex of expense in doing that. The CARES Act will help us with that from a federal uh, funding standpoint. We're going to get right at $979 million, $979,000 to help us with that conversion and some of the disruption of those services. But um, uh, some of that may help with some of the technology upgrades that, we, that we've had to make as a result of having to flip to online. So it's been very challenging. We finished this week and then we kick in summer, um, uh, May the 20th, and hopefully get something back to some sense of normalcy as we get on toward the end of the semester, uh, toward the end of the summer. So things are moving well. Uh, we'll continue to upgrade our technology and, and, and use our funds to best uh, suit our students and our faculty as we look at trying to uh, improve what we do for, um, for students from a four cent sales tax in particular. Okay, I was, if I can remember how to get back to this, I may have to get yeah, it looks a little different than it did a minute ago. I had to hit escape. That was it. All right, I forgot. Now we got to go there. All right, this is a video that ADW has done. I, I have emailed that to y'all. It's about a uh, right at a three-minute video uh, that will give you a good um, a good view of what uh, we've done from an outside perspective. 
We are beginning to look at the inside. Uh, we're doing that now. They have submitted um, sort of a tour of what the inside might look like. Um, we're spending a lot of time on that. We've got to give them some feedback in the next couple of weeks on it. And then we'll start getting closer to what that inside, the interior will, design will look like, um, and we'll be able to share that pretty soon. So this is the exterior, so I'm going to let this play, and then I'll answer any questions that you have after that. our exterior view so far and we're trying to of course we want to be as state-of-the-art as we as we possibly could um, and uh, our board has has approved the outside uh, design and so as I mentioned we're we're now beginning to look more inside we've been working on the inside for quite a while as in terms of what each program area is going to need because this will house electrical systems industrial systems and and machining and then it'll also have, um, of course, a, a corporate, um, of course, some uh, corporate meeting space like an auditorium, but it's not with fixed seating. It'll be very flexible. And then, of course, offices and, um, and a student commons area. So um, we we have a good understanding now of what will be needed in machining for, in terms of square footage, what will be in those program areas. But now we're beginning to look at what what will that design look like, sort of like the outside. How will that design look? and then how will it fit with the outside look and try to match all of that. So it's about a $19 million project. We're on budget right now, and so there's a long way to go. Um, but I feel good about what we're doing, and I think it's a building that can really pay dividends here for a long, long time so from a training standpoint. So I'd be glad to answer any questions that, that you have or any feedback that you have. Gentlemen? Uh, <clears throat> just a couple of questions. Uh, first off, I congratulate you. That's a that's a, quite a video. It's uh, I think they did a good job modernization of that. <laughs> They're very good. We're very pleased with them. of that campus. And I, as you spoke earlier, uh, touched on the outside. 
improvements that you're making, uh, uh, I think it's even more important, more critical that as you start the inside uh, expenditures and, and modernization that we keep those folks informed that are out there in the public want to sure. know how their dollars are being spent. Absolutely. And uh, some of the things you, you've mentioned that you've already spent the, uh, the spent some funds on, uh, I take it that none of these, uh, none of this tax, quarter cent sales tax is supplanting any of the existing budget, correct? No, no, uh, right. not at all. Thank yeah. you. That's all I had. Mm -hmm. Other commissioners? Uh, a couple quickies, I think maybe the pu public might be at. What's the total square footage in uh, this building? About 41,500 is what it's going to be. Of course, it's one story, so it's a big building as far as how much land it takes up because it is one story, but hey, about, about 41 and a half is what it's going to be. Uh, wow. Just out of curiosity, is there a figure per square, uh, square there, foot figure? There is. Uh, there is. It, in fact, we talked about that the other day. and, and don't hold me to this, but it's around $375 per square foot. It's in that neighborhood, yeah. Yeah, and it was pretty expensive. Yeah, it's expensive, yeah. Uh, how many square feet per student? Haven't calculated that, uh, but uh, we can. Well, you're doing Athlete. various things, and it depends yeah. on what you're doing. Yeah, it, that's true. Uh, that's right. But I was just kind of curious. Uh, and has the coronavirus uh, been a factor in your planning, or will it be? With this, it, 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 it will be um, as we start looking at, at the inside and how you design office spaces and those types of things. I think, I think life's going to be a little different. We're going to have to look at those types of things to protect, you know, even if you don't social distance at that point in the future, you're still going to have protective types of things in front of you that you're seeing. I think you'll do that in some of the office areas. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have to look at some of that. Um, yes, uh, we're having to look at current facilities as far as that goes now. Yeah, I, I think maybe some of the public might be interested, uh, happen to know of a building that's proposed in Rockingham County to start construction this summer that's 250,000 square feet and to be occupied next March. That's a lot shorter than the time scale. Would you address that a little bit? Because I think a lot of people are interested in the time requirement for this construction. Well, there's, there's, there's really, it, it just comes down to one thing. You're working with the Office of State Construction, you're at their mercy. And you got to understand that we're not their only project. Uh, you're looking at all the NC Connect bond fund projects uh, for the university system, for the community college system, for other state agencies or the state parks and some of the other things that were out there for those NC uh, Connect bond funds. We're not the only area, uh, part of the state that has a quarter cent sales tax, for example. So there are just hundreds and hundreds of projects out there that are having to be managed by the Office of State Construction. So anything that's over 500,000 has to go through the Office of State Construction. There's no way around that. That's, that is the law. We have to do that. There's been some talk about it, taking that to 1.5 million, but that has not been done yet. So I, I wish they would, that would be helpful. But it's, if, it's at 500,000, so any project like that, it could be resurfacing a large parking lot. If it's 500,000, you're going through office state construction to do that. So it does slow down the project. And there are, there are, there are certain steps that you have to go through uh, to get to that completion time. So they're, they're involved from the very beginning and so when we submit our schematic design, for example, our construction documents, we're at their mercy in terms of, of how long it takes them to review that and get back with us. So there are a lot of hoops to go through, and that's, that's really the explanation. That's just, there's really no control that we have, but they are managing a lot of projects uh, as a result of, of the bond funds that were passed back in 15, and then other types of construction projects that that you know, even if it's a, if it, even if you're raising it with private funds, you still have to go through the Office of State Construction if it's more than 500,000. Mm -hmm. And so that's just what you have to do. Mr. Chairman, I, I think those we may face or be prepared to run into same, some of the same issues that we've run into with our Youth Development Center through the, uh, through the state project too. You know, there's been some, some delays there just because of the scope of that project. But the having scope another of your project may be different, and it may solicit more interest. But they do uh, save us money. Uh, yeah. In my experience with working with them in my career, they do save money because there are another set of eyes on it. 
and they do um, work a lot. They work very closely with, with your architectural firm um, to make sure things are in order. And so, I mean, it, it, and it's not that they're um, not helpful because they are, but it just it just takes time. It's just the way it is. I wish it was faster because we need the building. Well, I appreciate your explanation. Uh, I, I know a lot of people are interested. However, if they drag on too long, they're not going to be saving us money. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're on budget right now. We're also on on schedule, which is which is good. They've been um, they've been probably one of the best architectural firms that I've worked with in a, in a while. They've been very very good for us. Glad to hear. So, yeah. Is there other questions? Thank uh, you. Uh, thank you. Well, thank you. We, I appreciate, we appreciate your support it. and uh, look forward to when this thing's completed and we can uh, have students in their training. I think it's going to be a, a, a great uh, aesthetically speaking when you enter the campus. It's just going to set I mean, the tone. You're, you're for going the, to be able to see it from the road because mm -hmm. all the trees on the right side as you come in, mm -hmm. they'll, be, they'll be taken up. It'll be a re-landscape, but you'll be able to see it from the road. And uh, it'll be your first building as you enter the main campus. That'll be the first thing you're going to see. That's, yeah. that's, that's going to be really nice. Um, would you come back in July or August sure. and give us another update? Absolutely. Yeah, we may be able to show more on the interior by then. Yeah, be glad to. Well, we'll no absolute date. You okay. give yeah. us some advice. That's fine. All right. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you, Dr. Mm -hmm. Kimball. We're uh, going to move on to uh, item eight. Uh, Royce Richardson is the uh, chairman of the Rockingham County Board of Elections. Uh, he's going to move some money around, I think. How are you, Royce? Good to have you. Uh, good afternoon, uh, board and chairman. Yes, I come uh, on behalf of the Rockingham County Board of Elections uh, asking that we uh, move to amounts of money from uh, line items to two other line items to uh, cover some expense we got for the rest of the fiscal year. It's not really an increase of anything, but uh, reducing the uh, Board of Election training and the staff training by $4,100 40, and $3,100 respectively. Um, as you know, we had uh, we had two people to retire uh, in March, the, our director and deputy director, which left us with one person in the office, the senior deputy. And uh, we've, had to, we've had to call in some uh, temporary help uh, uh, to help, help her uh, keep the office going. Uh, and both those line items will leave leave about $1,100 in the uh, board training line item and about the same amount in the staff training. Uh, and really we can't, we can't see uh, any need. We're not going to have any more board training or probably staff training for the rest of the fiscal year. So, and of course, uh, with the two retirements, uh, we're going to have in, in their salaries about three and a half months of salary that will not be used. We're interviewing, I mean, we're looking at applications. Uh, we started last week and we had several applications for the deputy uh, director's job and just a few for the director. Uh, and we went through those and, and uh, uh, started screening them ourselves, which the county uh, HR department had already screened them for qualifications but we started looking at them and hopefully we'll get in some more uh, applications especially for the director uh, but we don't anticipate hiring uh, either a director or a deputy director before the end of the fiscal year probably first of July we'd like to have somebody in place then uh, but if we look at the applications uh, in May, uh, interview people, give somebody that's working a chance to give a notice. You know, it'll be it'll be the first of July. So, yeah. but we would appreciate your moving that money around so we can continue to operate <laughs> for the rest of this year. Is there any questions? Yeah, any questions? Uh, Mr. Richardson, you, you said that you uh, thought you was going to have about three and a half months of uh, unused salary. Did uh, did either one of those employees have a payout? 
the yes, door. So I, I'm sorry, it, it really wasn't uh, all that. It was uh, it was some vacation, and for the deputy there was uh, some comp time, but so it really didn't amount to three and a half months. It's probably more like two and a half uh, or two months. Total payout was what? Which was a reduction of how much over what we would have paid. Always, yeah. Okay. Pay them out to do. What? Um, you mentioned that you'll have some money left over for salaries, uh, and I'm just curious of your overall budget. How much are you projecting to hand back to the county at the end of the fiscal year? Well, um, uh, even the, if we if we had the fifteen thousand dollar payout and we hired somebody now that would would have to pay them a salary so uh, in addition to the payout um, the let me look here we looked at this last week our uh, request uh, for 2021 was four hundred ninety three thousand six hundred dollars and the County manager recommendation uh, was 469.284. So uh, we're going to be requesting uh, 24, $25,000 less than, than what we had anticipated in our budget. Well, I, I think maybe I need to rephrase the question. Um, you've got two folks that have retired. Yeah. And you mentioned that uh, you uh, would have some money not spent out of that one particular line item, uh, that line item being, I would think, salaries uh, and benefits. Uh, and so that leads me to believe that you've got some money that would be coming back to the county general fund at the end of the fiscal year. And so my, my question is, in addition to that line item or those line items being salary and benefits uh, how much are you projecting to hand back to the county out of all of your line items uh, so that we can put it back into uh, our uh, general fund i can tell you that we requested uh, 164,900 dollars for uh, regular salaries uh, with the two vacancies uh, Paul and Lance reduced that to 150, so looking about 14 thousand dollars. Okay, that's the salary portion, but what about the rest of the budget? I, I'm just curious what you might have overall, because we're having to move some things because you did not budget enough for utilities, and then I believe there's also moving some things because didn't budget enough as far as paying certain employees. And I'm just trying, and we've got some money that's left over uh, due to the inability to train or go to different conferences. So I'm trying to figure out, is there a projection? Do y'all have any feel for how much overall you would be giving back to the county? How much did you over budget overall? It looks like about uh, $25,000. And most of that would be in salaries. Yes, yes. Um, so actually, else. the utilities in 2017-18, the actual utilities was $8,490. Uh, and this year we requested 6620 and I think uh, the county manager and Paul increased that by about four thousand, about uh, about thirty-eight hundred dollars. Your request was seven thousand five hundred seventy dollars, yeah. and we reduced that amount by the amount of the TV, which was nine hundred fifty dollars, which was six thousand six hundred twenty dollars. Right. But but Maybe your your recommendation your recommendation was more your recommendation was more than that. The adopted budget was six thousand six hundred twenty dollars. 
Are you looking at next year's budget? Yes. Okay, there's a difference in next year. Yes. Next okay. year we put in more because you didn't have enough to make it this year. That's right. For the last two years we didn't have enough. So. Hmm. No, but. They're consistent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can, can Pat help us? Pat. There's money over, I think, from the precinct. We talked about that earlier, the precinct funds. Right, so the precinct, um, the elections precinct staff, which is salary money, right now there's $32,900 left in that line. Right. Which I wouldn't expect you to be spending in that. No. Um, the overall budget for the entire board of elections right now, um, you have 100451 left over. That's not been spent. Now, that does not take into account. We still have salaries and utilities. Mm -hmm. So you'll have a significant amount. I, I can't give you the exact amount. So I haven't projected all their expenses for the rest of the year. May and June. Yeah. We've got yes, two, months got left, two months so. left. Yeah. Two months left. We should have a healthy amount left over. Yeah. Unless yeah. we get, you know, more. I have a question for Lance. Uh, so, okay. When, when Commissioner I, Pirtle. Uh, are you? Um, yes, sir. This is for Lance. Uh, how did we, uh, how did we miss the, the uh, utilities? down now, there yes sir well, we what we got based on what tina provided us for recommendation was uh, seven thousand five hundred seventy so we took that and we just reduced the amount for the direct tv yeah i mean I, I i would think that that's fairly consistent i don't know what the uptick was that to, to come up twenty five hundred dollars short for did any did any other department I mean, was there anything that you noticed county trends county wide that would show that yeah. Okay. No, I mean, it was the, uh, 16, 17 was 7,028. Actual uh, 17, 18 was 8,753. And then it goes down to uh, 18, 19, 7,175. Hmm. And that was including that direct TV. So I don't, can't figure it out. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Mr. Travis. Uh, sorry, boys. Uh, yes. I'm trying to make me understand what you're talking about. Based on what I'm seeing, you have a savings of four thousand one hundred some dollars for board training. Right. You got a savings of three thousand one hundred dollars for staff training. Right. That's a savings, and you want to move that to cover the cost of underpaying your employees. No, uh, move that for number one the utilities okay. twenty five hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and temporary salaries forty four hundred dollars. Uh, that that includes paying somebody from the middle of March yeah, to the end of, end of June. That's right. A part a part time person making a lot less money than the deputy and the director were making. I understand. I just want to make sure I understood. It's about seven thousand dollars. You want to move from one item right. to pay for utilities and salary. For the three hundred thirty seven dollars is to pay. Uh, probably about eight or ten part-time people we had in there to do canvas that had in, been in the past had been paid paid ten dollars an hour for some reason or another I don't know and our senior deputy doesn't understand this year they were paid after the primary they were paid nine dollars an hour and we just want to go back and pay them a dollar an hour. Okay. I, 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 I'm straight now. I appreciate okay. that. Yeah, it's just moving one line item to another. Okay. Other questions? I, I've only got one question, and I know you can't answer this, so I'm not setting you up. Uh, <laughs> I'm just curious why they didn't pay the, the whatever the going rate, ten dollars an hour, and how that error happened. I have no idea. I can't tell you that, and the senior deputy is in the other room, and I don't think she can. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Is there any chance it's going to happen again? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't okay. think so. The board's well aware of it, and uh, we don't think that'll happen again. I'd, I'd be curious if you find that piece of information. Uh, right now, gentlemen, uh, if we're at that point, uh, do we have a motion to approve the budget revision? I'll, I'll make a motion. Go ahead, Mr. Hall. I'll second, but I'd also have a question, Mr. Chair. Uh, this has been voted on by your full board. Is that yes, right? sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. It, it's, <laughs> motion stands. Been seconded. Further discussion? Here, none. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, by nay. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you all. We can.
Thank we you. can get some more help in there tomorrow. Good luck on your good luck on your interview process. Thank you. Item nine is uh, our director of engineering and public utilities. Talk to us uh, about item nine minus A. We're going to go directly to item B, if you would, sir. Hey, baby. It's on now. This was in, I know that one was in the packet, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, good evening, gentlemen, and uh, thank you for letting me come tonight. And got an item for your consideration. Uh, Steve Ahern uh, has requested that the county extend the water line to uh, serve a proposed new development on uh, NC 65 west of US 220. Uh, the extension be a six inch water main right around 5,500 linear feet along 65 to Mr. Ahern's property. Um, the uh, property owner be responsible for the uh, water line infrastructure inside the subdivisions and there's also 22 additional properties along the length of that uh, line that could possibly tap on in the future and I'll go over a little bit about the uh, the ROI the property has uh, 55.21 acres uh, uh, Mr. Ahern is proposing uh, to have 53 lots he can also have, I think, 53 with or without water from the county. Average home value of 250 to 275. I think he communicated to me he would try to do it in three to four phases. Uh, the estimated tax revenue once all 53 homes are completed is $96,692 per year. Uh, with, um, I just uh, took the median home price there. Uh, I use 200 gallons a day for water usage and uh, in speaking with Mr. Ahern uh, as far as the phasing and scheduling, seven homes to be constructed for years one through seven and then four homes in year eight. I think he's spoken to Commissioner Hall that he may do more than that um, uh, just depending on the market and uh, the return on investment is anticipated to be around 11 years. And if you, will, if you will look at this map here with the red square on it, that is where our line, which is phase two, is currently uh, located at. And Mr. Ahern's subdivision is the highlighted area here to the west of that, just to give you an idea of where our line is now and where his subdivision is proposed to be at. And if you look at this map here, it shows where his subdivision is and the blue dots are the secondary customers located along that line that could potentially hook on in the future. And uh, that is all I have, gentlemen. I'll be glad to try to answer any questions you have. And uh, Mr. Ahern, there he is on the other side of me, and he's here to answer questions too if you have any. Uh, gentlemen, do you have uh, inquiries? I do. Mr. Travis. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ronnie, uh, the proposed route, how many uh, homes do you think uh, will hook up with them? 
Uh, Commissioner Travis, I'm, I'm really not sure. Um, Secondary customers. Well, there's 22 possible. If there's 22 parcels along that route, and, and when I look at secondary customers, I look at whether it's a one acre lot or a hundred acre parcel, it counts as one secondary customer because we don't know if that hundred acres is going to stay hundred acres or if it's going to get subdivided in the future either. So there's 22 potential extra customers that could hook up. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair. Uh, Ronnie, uh, and, uh, excuse me. Um, these 22 potential, we, I assume we'll send them a uh, card as we've mm -hmm. done in the past and maybe offer discounts if they hook on while we're running that line. It would be glad to if the board would like for us to do that. If you want to add an incentive like we had on the other lines that we're working on, uh, we can do the same thing. We One time we had a half off and then we had a, a, a zero tap fee. The zero tap fee seems to have gotten the most interest from everybody. We've had a lot of new customers with that on phase two. So, well, if we, if should we choose to do this, I'd, I'd like for us to consider making that a, uh, a, a a component of it to go ahead and send that out and offer that incentive. Okay. Uh, the zero tap fee would be would be fine with me. We'll talk about that, I guess, as we move forward. Okay. And we Thank can do you. it the same way we did the others. We did door hangers for all of those. And the door hanger had a packet in it. It had uh, not only the information about the free tap, but the fees for water service and who to contact about initiating that for those customers. So, And we do have a deadline for those free taps. I would. We did. It was uh, up until the point that the contractor the way it was worded uh, had gotten past wherever that person's house is okay. and we wouldn't go back and put it in after the fact. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. So another question is going to ask, be asked where's the funding going to come from and again it's going to come from the fund balance. Uh, if we included, if we included what's proposed it would drop us Still have a healthy fund balance of about roughly 2.8 million, um, but uh, that's where we come from. But that figure that you're giving us is what we're over and above. 18 percent. Okay. Right. So the the you did have this year we spent about 1.8 million in in the fund balance from if, if this is approved this one then the one that was approved previously the animal shelter is in it um, some big ticket items a few big ticket items. The uh, new sewer lines in it, the uh, renovations to Damon, so. but you still have plenty of equipment. And we got into this when we started the water line extension discussions uh, in a meeting. Uh, how many customers ballpark, rough figure? Do we need to get to the break-even point? Isn't it another? We 600? need 875 more. 875. Yes, sir. Okay. Customers. Yes, sir. The customers are household. Well, that's households. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. Our uh, residents. That that based on 200 gallons. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Which is a. Which is more than I. He has a question. And I got one too. Mr. Travis, <laughs> right. I know we've talked about this before. You know, uh, we're spending taxpayers' money to expand the line. What is the normal? What is we? What are we doing now? Let's say something happens and and, and this customer does not provide 53 homes. Who's going to pay the taxpayers back for investing in this infrastructure that doesn't get completed? General fund. So we're giving this customer 300 some thousand dollars just to hook up water and sewer, but there's no return investment in case he fails. No, not as it's presented to you tonight. But it's my understanding this is what we're working on to eventually establish in the county. We don't yes. mind working and investing money, but we have to have a guarantee in writing to get our money back if the person doesn't fulfill their obligation. Right. I'm not sure I'm following He's your question. Right, yeah. 
Yeah, and we've been talking with the people, the company that's working on the land use plan, and I think they've presented some options for the policy for that. But most of those were similar to options we've already presented to the board. So with this project, there is no policy in place to no, sir. for any return of investment for liability reasons. That is correct. So we're taking it on his word that he's going to make sure he builds 53 houses. Pretty much, yes, sir. And he's got how many years to do all this? Uh, eight years. Eight years. And no repercussions if he doesn't do it in eight years? No, sir. Not as presented tonight, no, sir. And that's what we're working on, Kevin, right? To finally get a policy in place to ensure the taxpayer's money? That was the purpose of the meeting a few months ago I believe at that point, uh, prior to that meeting, the board's policy was to not extend the line uh, as far as, and we're not talking about sewer, we're talking about water. Right. Uh, as far as a water line, that it was up to the customer uh, to do any extension to their property. That was the policy. Uh, I don't remember if it was that meeting or shortly after there, there was a meeting that was had where the policy was then adopted by the board to, uh, and it was changed to where it would be a case-by-case -case basis. And then at the last, I guess a month ago, uh, somewhere in there, um, <clears throat> when uh, the extension down Gold Hill Road uh, was voted on, uh, and that was an extension. Now, the extension that, uh, that we did and actually funded tonight under the consent agenda was an extension or expansion of our infrastructure. And so I think in my mind the question is, is this somewhere we want to expand our infrastructure to try to cut into that 800 and something odd customers that we need at this point? Uh, and so our current policy is review the request and is this an area we want to expand our infrastructure? Right. That's our policy. Uh, but in that request, it is a request from a property owner. Do we want to extend it towards that property? And the reason the request is coming in and we're asking for information is uh, what is going to happen down in that area? And so, you know, I'm looking at this and see several large tracks that we're crossing. I don't know who owns each of those tracks and you know, how many uh, are, uh, or how many of those owners have children that don't live in this area because that's typically what happens. Uh, right. Mom and dad farm and they pass away and children are hours away. Right. Uh, and then things happen as far as subdividing and, and selling and then potentially subdividing. So with this being in the southwest part of the county, which Proximity to Guilford County is certainly uh, a major factor in development uh, in that area. Is this an area that the board wants to expand our infrastructure and potentially spur additional uh, development in that area? Uh, and what's, uh, what's kind of spearheading uh, us looking at that is, of course, a potential development uh, at the end of this expansion. So, that's right. you know, that, but that's our policy at this point. And I think, um, I think John emailed us other suggestions that came from that group. Um, but at some point, yeah, we got to get back together and, and see right. whether or not we want to do something different than what we're doing now right. or um, continue on the current path as far as how to expand our infrastructure. Right. Uh, and potentially spur additional growth. But, but at some point, we've got to cut in, and, and the whole purpose of starting this discussion was cutting into uh, that uh, big problem that we inherited uh, with regards to uh, our utilities. Yeah. Uh, I mean, because we are putting that uh, roughly penny in every year, and it's going to take some time and it's going to take some capital investment to cut into that. Uh, yes, we may not uh, 
these numbers, uh, they are projections. They're uh, certainly hopeful thinking. Uh, they may be on the conservative side. We may find out that they were not on the conservative side as far as how fast homes go in that area. I mean, that, uh, that's always a guess. But uh, I think the question before us is whether or not we want to expand the infrastructure uh, to potentially pick up more customers and is this in an area of the county that it makes sense to expand the infrastructure right I, I absolutely think it's uh, needed and it's an area that we're expanding in so I, I'm all for this project I just uh, I know we've been discussing and I want this board to stay on track with the discussion about um, getting some kind of something in writing later on down the line not this project but later on the line that if something ever falls through the county and taxpayers money is protected from the investment that we're doing so I know we've discussed it before that's why I want to make sure we're still on that path to come up with them policies in place but I'm, I'm all for this project yeah. yeah as far as whether we're still on the path I mean it's got to get back on the agenda and then I mean I I think we've got a couple of things that we've uh, I think John's thrown two out I've thrown something out I don't know if anybody else has got anything to throw out but I mean we either continue on this policy or uh, we talk about it some more and adopt something different <coughs> I just think we've got to do something to try to expand that customer base and, and eat into that hole so. I yeah I, I compliment you on your explanation that's exactly the way I understood it. that's why I appreciate it okay. uh, Commissioner Pearl thank you mr. chairman uh, well I had a couple of points to that I was going to bring up and uh, our county hand. manager answered one of them before I could ask the question and uh, <laughs> a couple of my colleagues uh, answered the others before I could bring those points uh, yeah my, my concern I echo what both my colleagues have said obviously we have to expand our our infrastructure to increase our customer base uh, our, our enterprise fund is upside down right now we're moving money out of the general fund into the enterprise fund to supplement that on an annual basis to the tune of about a penny and uh, the only way we're going to get right side up is to extend our customer base but we have to move uh, uh, with uh, with caution uh, my colleague I think the word you was looking for was clawbacks that's and, right, and and I understand that because we're making that commitment uh, and my biggest concern here tonight over this issue was we had one similar come one similar before us here recently and we were in a different financial climate our it was a you know the, a, a moment in time was before what's impacted us now uh, and we still to today we don't truly know until we get some sales tax numbers come in uh, down the road that to, 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 to say the financial state of the county we we hope that uh, the impact is going to be minimal but we don't know uh, but uh, it, it, it still I, I feel comfortable uh, after talking to our county manager uh, and with our fund balance that uh, this is a, a project that it still deserves our full attention and that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Mr. Uh, Hall. Just a couple of things I want to be sure to clarify. Uh, and Ronnie, the, I guess the first point is we're running lines down the public right of way, down the highways. This is not going on private property or on a private subdivision. That is correct. <clears throat> yes, sir. So, you know, we, we are expanding the infrastructure only. We're not running lines in a private development for one person to benefit. There are 22 other properties in this pathway who will benefit from this and some of them yes, are sir. rather large and as commissioner has pointed out um, you know that those could see growth in the future the other thing and I think Commissioner Travis is right we, one of the things we've got to start looking at is how much can we afford to do this on an annual basis how much money can we afford to spend to expand this infrastructure and then the big point that we've got to come up with is where is it important to do that infrastructure expansion at <clears throat> and so the question as Commissioner Berger said tonight is is do we consider this a key growth area for the county uh, do we think that um, 
this is the right place to go ahead and spend money now, knowing that there's a, a, an immediate need for 53 homes plus an additional 22 homes existing or 22 properties existing in the area. That's a question that I think is before us as well. Let me, let me add one more bit of information. Uh, Commissioner Travis, you asked about the secondary lots. I, I pulled the overhead out and just looked at it real quickly. It looks like 14 or 15 single family homes own those 22 secondary lots okay. is what I can see from the overhead. So that's probably roughly the number of houses that could potentially hook on. Okay, thank you. And All right. I believe at one of the prior meetings we gave some, uh, I don't know if it was vague directive or, or more than that for Lance and the upcoming budget to have something budgeted for uh, uh, infrastructure uh, improvements or uh, you know, development so that we could fund these projects uh, you know as time went on on an annual basis a and then we would have some idea or some amount funded uh, to pull this type of money from and I remember that I don't know if okay I would, I would recommend, and we'll talk about Well, but in my mind, at least the way I'm thinking of that is, so when someone came in, we'd pull it from that line item, and then as we got further in the year, if we got too many requests, it'd be up to us whether or not we put more money in it or say, you'll have to come back next year and be one of the first ones next year. Uh, something along those lines, but. That's, that's, that's a good idea. Ideally, it'd be nice to spend money that would come from the uh, enterprise fund. Let's pay the enterprise fund. Eventually. We're trying. <laughs> so, you need yeah. Mr. Chair, I, I've, I've got a question for the developer, if, if I could. Yes, sir. Good evening, Mr. Ahern. Um, looking at this projection, uh, we've talked earlier, and the projection is based on building seven houses per year. Uh, what do you see? I know the climate's changed, but what what do you see? Uh, is that too conservative? Is that too ambitious? How do you feel that would be for you? Over, uh, I'll only speak to my experience. I began developing in 97. So over the last 23 years, I've averaged, you take all economies over those 23 years, and I've averaged eight houses a year. So I'm, I'm good with the seven. Uh, this year, if this, I know we're dealing with the COVID, but our real estate market is the best that it has been in my career. Um, some people would argue 2006, but 2006 was a false economy. We had people buying houses that couldn't afford them. Today, everyone who's buying houses can't afford it. They do qualify. They are putting money down. Hands down, this market that we are in today, even with the COVID, is unmatched. Um, I had three closings last week. I could have sold the same house 10 times in three days. That tells me there's 10 people out there still looking for a house. We don't have the inventory. I'm a real estate, I'm a real estate broker, home builder, and land developer. I do absorption rates as far as a real estate agent. By my count, right now we're about 14 months behind on inventory in this area. And when I say this area, I'm talking about Stokesdale, Rockingham County. We're 14 months behind on inventory. I currently, I'm getting ready to pull six more permits within the next two weeks. I have another builder who builds with me in my subdivision. She's got two under construction now. As hard as we can go, it's gonna take us 14 months to catch up. That's where we are today. If I had started this subdivision last year, I think we would have probably sold 16 houses in the first year in this economy. And that's the only thing I can speak of is this economy. But there again, if you look at my average eight a year, it's a pretty good average. Very good, thank you. Yes, sir. Other questions? Mm. Uh, Mr. Aaron, hang with you just a second. Yes, sir. Uh, um, 
Mr. Tate mentioned earlier that there was a potential for more than 53 houses. Uh, no. no, he didn't. No, sir. No, sir. I think that was the secondary customers, maybe. <laughs> there, there are 14 or 15 lots. You've already, you've already planned out your, your acreage in this particular parcel, is that correct? The subdivision is drawn based yeah. upon my soil analysis, and so we come up with 53, 53 lots. Uh, are you holding all the lots, or have you sold some? Well, we ain't started yet. <laughs> When, when the time when the time when the time be comes, one builder on the property. Well, no, we're going to have at least two, depending upon the market. The other builder I have and myself, we can handle twelve to sixteen a year. If it gets beyond that, I'll bring another builder in. Okay. But we can we can handle a good volume. That's, of that's exactly what I wanted to know. How much your construction potential you had? Right now, I've got eight under construction. Yeah. And I've got four more coming. If that gives you an idea of what I can handle. And that's just me. That's not the other builder. Other questions? Well, we need a, we're at that point where we need a, a motion, yay or nay? I'll make so, a motion, Mr. Chairman. Second. Well, to approve. Second. Yes, to approve. Moved and seconded. Thank you both. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed by nay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Congratulations. We look forward to Thanks, marvelous things down your way. See you, Steve. <coughs> right. Mr. County Manager, do we have new business under 10? <laughs> Commissioner Comment started with Commissioner Travis. I've got no comment. Commissioner Pirtle. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just want to make mention of, uh, I think it would be appropriate, uh, Rockingham County lost one of its uh, uh, citizens this week that has done a lot for the communities uh, in this county. Uh, Mr. Wayne Kirkman of Eden passed away on Saturday afternoon. Uh, Wayne was a lifelong resident of Eden and uh, was a member of the JCs that was instrumental in forming Leaksville Spray and Draper into what is now called the Wonderful Land of Eden back in 1967. He also served on the City of Eden School Board and the Rockingham County School Board, so he was a public servant and uh, a, uh, a fixture in the community, and uh, my uh, condolences to his family. Uh, and that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Berger, I just want to thank everyone for tuning in tonight, and we look forward to the days that you can come back to our meetings. Mr. Hall. I'll have to echo both sentiments tonight. Um, just condolences to the family of Wayne Kirkman. Again, he was well known throughout the community and a uh, uh, good individual. Um, again, as Commissioner Berger said, we miss everybody. We miss seeing you. We hope you'll be back soon. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, I had only positive experience with Mr. Kirkman. I, I served as liaison to the school board while he was there. Uh, very thoughtful and dedicated member of that board and a uh, real service to the community there and uh, other places. So again, condolences to the family. Uh, Mr. Berger, I want to thank you for a very concise and but complete uh, explanation of a complicated issue. We've been through several things and we need to stay on top of that and I hope the land <laughs> the land process uh, helps us resolve that but that's it's not going to happen instantaneously i'd like to mention to folks that in regard to the coronavirus i think all the commissioners have had uh, emails and correspondence and conversation with people that are anxious to go back to the norm uh, well uh, our expectation is we're not going back to the norm as we knew it and certain protocols that are in place now in regards to social distancing, as it's called, and various other policy procedures. I think people are going to be wearing masks for quite a while. However, uh, I know this board is interested in getting the economic aspect back on track as promptly as we can, and we will do so. But it behooves the public to follow instructions. Uh, I mentioned a couple of you that uh, I happen to be in Walmart, which had a very thorough program in place but many of the customers were not following it, not following the arrows, not keeping the six feet. Uh, all the employees apparently were doing the same. 
So uh, to expedite a return to an economic normalcy, I would encourage all of our residents to act smart. Uh, it's, it's, corona is not going away instantaneous and we look forward to what the governor has to say uh, beyond what went on today on Friday and uh, look forward to uh, a more resilient economy in the future further comments hearing none uh, we would accept a motion to move into closed session and I would warn the folks out there uh, our closed session is not likely to bring forth anything that we will re-enter public section and make an announcement. Mr. Chairman, I move we'll go into closed session pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11A1, approval of closed session minutes, A3, consult with attorney, and A4, uh, expansion of, of industry. Motion made. Second. And seconded. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those bows by name. Roger.